somewhere in the distance there is Belize. And these guys are going to be our transportation to Belize. Here in a bit, we're going to be tindering over. And we're going to hop on another boat, a speedboat, and head inland to check out some Mayan ruins. Unbelievable. That's a big um, <laughs> A troop would consist of up to about a dozen members. A normal size would be about eight. So this is the Jaguar Temple called that. We don't know its original name, but it's called that because of these uh, images here that have might resemble a jaguar, which was revered here at Lamini by a lot of Mesoamerican people. This is unique because it's one of the few Mesoamerican sites that we have the original name Lamini that we know from historical records. Uh, and it was has been here since about 1500 BC. When the Spaniards came some 3,000 years later, they found a vibrant community that was still active in maintaining its ancient tradition. Spaniards dominated Lamanai for almost a hundred years, but then around 1640, the Maya rebelled, denouncing their Christian belief, burned the Spanish churches, and allied themselves with a community in Western Belize called Kipo. Spanish records provide us with the original name of the site as Lamanaim, believed to have been submerged crocodile. Numerous crocodile representations have been discovered here at Lamanaim on buildings, pottery, vessels, which indicate that the crocodile was an important symbol to the inhabitants of this community. Spanish documents also provide us with the name of the river back around the 15th century. We referred to it as Zulunicub, meaning strange or foreign men. The natives here saw the strange looking Europeans using the waterway as a highway. Now obviously you can't tell it now, but originally this would have been very ornately colored, as would as would all of the uh, buildings that were here but over time of course those colors have faded and this is what remains here are the ruins of a ball court from the ancient mesoamerican game that was played similar to basketball of course the big difference is at the end of the game there usually was human sacrifice it's debated whether or not the winners were sacrificed or if the losers were sacrificed but we do know that uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the game, uh, 
there were sacrifices made. I don't know if you can hear in the background that roar. There are howler monkeys making all sorts of noises in the background. According to the tour guide, howler monkey roar that you might hear in the background <laughs> was used, uh, was mixed to help create the sound of the dinosaurs in uh, Jurassic Park. That most of us have, we cannot build something this beautiful and for it to last this long. This temple is approximately 33 meters in height. 110 feet. Have in mind the floors where we are standing. This is not the original flooring. The original flooring is approximately three, meet, three feet down plastered limestone. <laughs> the Mayas didn't build nothing for no reason. There was always a reason behind what they did. If you see to the back, we just saw the ball court where the Mayas used to play their sacrificial game. That ball court is so small compared to the one in Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza one is huge, meaning that ball court was not used to play the ball game, or either another ball game was played. But my friends, have in mind playing that ball court, you would die playing that game and eventually rise and go to the heavens. You see clearly the ball court is aligned with the center stairways of this beautiful high temple, meaning you would die and rise and go to the heavens. The Mayas believed the taller their building were, the closer to their gods they felt. Okay, we're going to the top of the mask temple. It's very steep. This is the only temple you have the opportunity to climb, which is fun. Bad news is, you gotta come down there. <laughs> After you do. Not exactly conducive to filming. <laughs> 